day two at Mast Asia 2019. Today we're taking a look at some of the foreign exhibitors. Well, this year at Mast we are showcasing a uh, number of things. Uh, chief of them, uh, Drix here, uh, which is a uh, USV, which has been developed by XBlue two years ago. Uh, Drix is a platform, a uh, very efficient one, which is going to smoothen the movements and provide the sensors, whatever their type, uh, with an excellent data gathering environment. As far as military applications are concerned, we could fit virtually any payload. Uh, we have an ongoing program uh, with the British government and a company called SEAC uh, to fit a uh, crate array, which is a towed array passive sonar behind Drix. The main advantage uh, would lie in persistency. Uh, you will have persistence uh, with such an uh, asset. Uh, we've got an endurance uh, which can go up to 10 days. Uh, so imagine a number of Trixies uh, towing uh, passive array antennas uh, and spaced one every 10 nautical miles for instance. You could cover virtually dozens and even hundreds of miles uh, at a very reasonable price. So, uh, and the advantage of fitting it on board Drix specifically is that Drix is a very silent platform. It is very silent. Uh, therefore, uh, you will again have very good results and very acute sensitivity on the on the the towed array passive sonar. As far as the deployment itself is concerned, you could use any existing lifting devices: a crane, a davit, an A-frame, which is not very common on uh, on, uh, on on warships, but uh, which could pretty much exist in. Uh, auxiliary fleets or uh, things of the kind. More and more uh, the navies around the world are looking for cost-efficient solution to multiply the number of sensors they've got into the water and to avoid sending uh, costly frigates uh, to do the job. Okay, so basically uh, what most of the countries today are trying to achieve is to have uh, permanent moving sound barriers, uh, a bit like the SOSUS system which is a fixed one, uh, but this one would be uh, mobile uh, and uh, attached to uh, unmanned assets. Particularly surfaced unmanned assets, because if you do that, you have no communication problems with underwater sensors. One of the things that we're most proud of is this uh, helicopter behind me, the AH-1 Zulu Viper helicopter, built by Bell, Bell and flown by the United States Marine Corps for about the last decade. As you know, uh, Japan has an interest in amphibious operations. The new Amphibious Rapid Deployment Brigade is uh, being talked about and things are being thought through about how to equip that force and in my opinion the AH-1Z Viper is the perfect solution to to many of the challenges that that force will encounter in its defense of the Southwest West Asian islands. The key thing that separates the Zulu from all other attack helicopters in the world is the fact that it's marinized. Marinized means many things, but one of the things it means is it has corrosion protection for the harsh environment that you encounter at sea. But it also means protection against electromagnetic interference. One of the things that's very dangerous on board ships is the radars put out extreme amount of power and an attack helicopter on the flight deck of a ship uh, can have electromagnetic interference that could damage the equipment in the airplane, but even worse, could cause a, uh, uh, a fault in the munitions uh, uh, cycle and have uh, horrible consequences on the flight deck. The other thing that marinization means is having a small logistics footprint, meaning a supply chain that can be managed 
uh, in both an expeditionary environment and board, on board ship. And finally, it has to be maintainable in the confined spaces of the flight deck or hangar deck, meaning that you have to have the rotor blades able to be folded and you have to have panels that are accessible to the maintainers on a, on a turning deck. The Z Viper has all of those things and no other attack helicopter in the world has those things. This aircraft will be able to operate off of every Japanese ship as it operates off of every U.S. Navy ship around the world today. And that's what makes it an incredibly uh, attractive platform for the Japanese Self-Defense Force. Atlas has, has been a long-term partner for Japan in the underwater domain. And uh, it started uh, years ago with uh, 2093, which was uh, a mine warfare system uh, provided by uh, Thales UK through a partnership with uh, Itachi. And uh, more recently, we have developed uh, a partnership with MHI company. And uh, we are the payload provider of the OZZ-5, which is a UUV which has been developed by MHI for, uh, for uh, mine detection and uh, localization. We have an office in Japan uh, which uh, employs around uh, 150 persons and uh, it uh, recently with the merge of uh, Gimalto uh, the number of people have been uh, increased and uh, which brings the total people of working for Tele Japan to 150 people person. So it's a synthetic aperture sonar payload uh, which name is Samdis. Uh, it's a dedicated payload for uh, mine warfare detection and classification, which is a high resolution payload, which permits uh, to enhance the probability of uh, classification and reduce as much as possible the pos probability of false classification, which is necessary for mine warfare. Thales uh, for long has been developing sonars and uh, sonars dedicated to mine warfare and the, the one we've got here is a, a, a version of what has been developed uh, also for other navies like uh, France, the UK, uh, same kind of antennas that the one that are within the MMCM program. We delivered the first payload for, uh, for development and uh, integration uh, which has been uh, successful and uh, we are talking for the future of uh, this uh, OZZ-5 which is going to be used for mine warfare in uh, Japan. Lockheed Martin has enjoyed uh, the honor of uh, working with the government of Japan and Japanese industry for more than 65 years to help protect this country. We have had and, and continue to have ongoing programs in uh, both military and civilian helicopters, uh, layered defense uh, systems, combat and mission systems for air, surface and subsurface uh, threats. So the, the real value of, of shows like this is the chance to have a dialogue with our customer community um, to learn more about some of the challenges that they have and allow us to talk to them about how our technology can help them uh, achieve their goals. and. Uh, and we always like to, to finish with um, you know, our, our favorite saying, which is basically behind me here, your mission is ours. <laughs>